This is a story time about the time I caught my ex-boyfriend cheating on me. And it isn't the last time I found an ex-boyfriend cheating on me, but it is the first time I did. I met this guy when I was in eighth grade and let's call him Randy. And he really showed me no mind in eighth grade because I was like not that girl yet. As soon as we got into like high school, we were absolutely obsessed with each other, but we were so on and off. And he really didn't like that I smoked a little bit of the herb. So he would break up with me all the time because of the herb. It's the type of relationship though, where you're on and off so much and for so long that people just associate you with each other. So like, ew, people still ask me about him and I'm like, I don't even know who that is. In high school, I was the type of girl that like if you made me upset, I would just threaten to fight, which is not cute. But that's how I was. Like I just immediately threatened to fight you if you made me upset or said things I didn't like. Again, sorry, I'm so problematic. My childhood was not fun, okay? There happened to be this girl that was like talking about my mother, like just completely disrespecting me as a person. I had heard of this girl because she was honestly going around and having the deed with all of my friend's boyfriends. <laughs> At the time, really pissed me off, but now as I'm older, I'm like, okay, she was pulling, like, come on. But Miss Girl found out who I was, and I guess she thought I was competition, or she didn't like how I was raised, and she was talking crazy about me. I was a really angry teenager. Like, I can't stress that enough. If you've seen any of my older videos, like, you know, my childhood was, it made me very angry. And I don't think people are honest about that enough, but like, yeah, I was an angry kid. I told this girl, if you want to keep talking about me, just fight me. Like, literally just fight me. Brandy at the time was like, don't do it. Like, it's beneath you. Like, don't threaten to fight people, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, no, I'm going to pull up on this girl. Like, whatever. And I can't believe I'm even telling this story. This is so embarrassing. <laughs> I finally tell this girl, like, I'm pulling up on you. Where do you live? And she tells me. She literally tells me. She told me her address. So I was like, okay, this girl probably thinks she's going to win this fight. Like, she is she about to jump me? So I decide to pull up to the event with my two best friends. And when we get there, we're waiting in the car for like ever. We're waiting outside. We're waiting outside. And we're like, come outside. Like, what's going on? Like, why aren't you coming outside? Like, and also at this point, like, we're like texting like we're friends. Like texting like, I'm on my way. Okay, I'm here. Okay, be right out. Like, we, are we friends? What's going on? So we're waiting and waiting and waiting. And we're like, what is taking so long? And then suddenly the door opens. Who comes strolling outside other than Randy? Randy, what? I'm flabbergasted. I am in awe. I'm shocked. I'm like, there's no possible way this is happening right now. Comes out behind him looking happy as a clam. Pop out that car faster than a bat out of hell and I'm cursing them both out like I'm going in. And he starts trying to hold me back and he's like, it's beneath you, it's beneath you. And I'm like, it's beneath me. Who was just beneath you? Like, don't talk about me. And like, I already wanted to fight this girl and now this is happening. Like now I have ammunition, like I'm mad. In conclusion, we ended up going up to the 7-Eleven by her house to fight cause her mom got home, which is so teenager of us. She did in fact end up trying to jump me and I did in fact win but it didn't solve any of my problems because my boyfriend still had just been in her house so do not fight it's stupid okay this is the story time about the time that i dated cousins and yes they were first cousins because mama can pull okay i fully understand how messy this is but i didn't care then and i definitely don't care now so let me set the scene for you okay it's 2017 era fetty wap is at his peak twitter is the app to be on snapchat's at its best and baby, we're outside. Maybe I was a Twitter girly. I was on Twitter every single day and Musical.ly had just came out. I had had this Twitter mutual that I thought was so cute, but we never spoke and we just kind of knew each other's friends. During this time, there was this trend with Musical.ly where you'd post a video of yourself like looking crazy and then you'd switch to looking good. So like a transition would be today. I posted mine on Twitter and it blew up. Like I literally felt like no one could touch me, girl. I am Emily Kardashian. Like, are you kidding me? I'm famous on Twitter. Let's call this Twitter mutual Jeff, okay? Well, Jeff quote tweets this tweet which is very bold at the time Jeff is like hard eyes and i'm like he's bold like we're in love simply in love after that i message him and i'm like be my boyfriend duh <laughs> we exchange numbers and we decide that we're gonna meet up at this fair that they have in the town i live in like every summer which was like a big deal at the time right like if you took a picture with a boy at the fair in my town People were talking, baby. Me and this boy start moving quick. Like we're talking on the phone, falling asleep on FaceTime, doing the whole teenager thing. When we meet at the fair, we're like instantly in love, right? I jump into his arms. We're taking pictures, videos, posting on everything, like in love. And God bless his heart. He's literally so sweet. Contemporary church boy, like so nice. But after a few days of dating him, I realized like he's too nice, right? He's like friends with so many girls and nice to everyone he meets. And I'm an insecure teenager and I'm not cool with that. Are you kidding me? He wasn't actually that nice. He ends up cheating on me after literally writing a song about me. And I'm just kind of like, period. The song was ass. So who even cares? Well, his cousin Daniel happens to go to my school and he happens to actually be one of my friends. And Daniel was always FaceTiming me to give me advice with his cousin. And I was like, oh my God, we're buddies. Like whatever. Daniel was quite the opposite of Jeff. He was not a nice church boy. He was like completely the opposite, like very not good at all. After I found out about Jeff cheating, I'm just talking to Daniel like, why would he do this? Like blah, 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 like talking to him like he's my friend. And like Daniel was way funnier than Jeff. Like Jeff was sweet and cute and Daniel was kind of ugly and funny. So I 
did the math and I was like, mm, I think I'm starting to like Daniel more. Emily, what? Like what? So I finally decide like what better way to get back at someone for like treating you wrong than dating their cousin. Like there's no better option. And you at this time I was still fully convinced I was gonna wait till marriage to like do the deed. And so these boys were getting pulled fully off personality. I finally tell Jeff that I'm talking to Daniel and he was hysterical. And like rightfully so, like if someone did that to me, like I would be in jail, so. All this comes to end up biting me in the ass because it turns out that Daniel's actually a piece of shit and he makes out with my best friend and I find out that Jeff never actually cheated and he's just really that sweet of a contemporary church boy. Love him. Me and Jeff ended up actually working that out and becoming friends and we definitely talked again, but it didn't go anywhere. So yeah, don't date cousins. <laughs> Am I wrong for accusing my ex of faking a pregnancy and a miscarriage? A few months ago, me and my ex-girlfriend, E, had a falling out. We are military. I live outside the U.S. and she lives in the U.S. To make a long story short, I cheated on her. Ah! No, bro! I was about to be on your side, but no, no, no cheaters. No cheaters in this channel, okay? It was just a kiss. How don't, don't, don't try to belittle it. Just a kiss. Shut up. However, that still doesn't make it right and it's a violation of trust. The same night I cheated, I told E about it. I broke up with her because of it and because my feelings toward her had been changing for the past four months. I was open about this and she knew it was an issue. The person I kissed that night, S, and I became close. We eventually started dating. Mm. Keep digging yourself deeper, my friend. In the hole. Keep going. In late March, E told me she was pregnant. I processed this and we talked about it. She told me not to tell anyone. However, I told S since we were dating. I figured S had the right to know. The last time E and I slept together was January 1st. I asked E for proof of pregnancy. She said she had blood work done that came back positive. However, she could not produce records of the visit or the results of the blood test. I believed her anyways. Okay, that's first red flag. Of course you can prove your pregnancy, bro. Go pee on a stick in front of him. There you go. E and I talked extensively about our relationship with the child. I told her I would be in the child's life, but we were nothing more than co-parents. S was on board for being a stepmom should things progress with us. We talked about buying things for the baby and how we would both see our child. We even decided on names. E asked if I was seeing anyone and I told her I was. You can imagine how that went. Oh no, was this like a pregnancy to like a fake pregnancy to try to get you back even after you cheated and express to her that you don't like her and you're with the girl that you cheated on her with? E said she was having abdominal pain and spotting. E told me she got a blood test and an ultrasound after going to the ER but couldn't give me the results or even a picture of the wristband or ultrasound from the hospital or discharge paperwork. Okay, this homegirl's obviously lying. Though the military has TRICARE, she claims she paid for her hospital visits out of pocket. I became suspicious and pushed for E to schedule an ultrasound and see a doctor and meet with her leadership to discuss how we should go forward. She said she scheduled it. However, the day before her appointment with her leadership and the doctor, she told me she was in the hospital and was having pain. I became worried. I called and texted for almost a whole day trying to see if the baby was okay. She did not answer my calls or messages. Finally, she answered, saying she had a miscarriage. I talked to her and tried to see if she was okay. I tried to help. After talking a bit, I asked to see her discharge paperwork. She said the hospital didn't give her any and didn't show me anything proving she visited the hospital. I told her I needed time to process. After a couple of days, I asked why she couldn't show me any proof of our child ever existing. She said she couldn't believe that was all I cared about, which it wasn't. I even bought her pregnancy pillow and did extensive research on baby food and health, and that she didn't want to talk to me at all because of it. She then cut contact abruptly. I told her I didn't believe she was ever pregnant or had a miscarriage. I accused her of lying and manipulating me in my emotions. Am I the asshole here? Uh, you're an asshole for cheating, but everything else after that, no, so. Am I the asshole for calling my friend a pick me? I, 20, female, am friends with Anna, 21, female. We bonded over several of our favorite authors and libraries were hangouts. Anna is a gamer now because of her boyfriend. He introduced her to Overwatch and she got addicted for weeks. She also changed her avatars on Discord to anime or video game avatars. She seems really into the aesthetic of girls who are pressured into a super feminine role as a gamer. I told her I'm sad she doesn't hang out anymore because it feels like her boyfriend is just forcing her to play games. She got really defensive and said her boyfriend has helped her get really good at games and built her gaming aesthetic. I said that it feels like she's contributing to a misogynistic image of female gamers and it feels pick me ish. She responded by calling me a judgmental a-hole and that she can invest in any hobby she wants. Am I really in the wrong? She was never super into pink or interacting with guy gamers online in discord 24 7 so it comes off as a pick me to me.